Welcome to another episode of the Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson. Shout out to my guys, Cam and Mace, on the Come and Talk to Me Network. And shout out to my co-host, the dynamic, incredible, Blue. What's that's up, the, man? That's the type of intro I need, man. The dynamic? I'm trying to get my best Steve Harvey on. I'm dynamic? Dynamic. Not, <laughs> not dynamic. Dynamic. You're dynamic, nah, yes. I'm dyna- that's, how, that's how brought back I was by that compliment. Yeah, absolutely. I'm f- pounds? What are we doing? Oh, my bad. Come on, man. My bad. My bad. Oh, my bad. Set the energy off right today. How you oh, feeling? I thought I did. You did. You did. I'm feeling you good. You feeling good? Yes. Looking good. Got Looking the, for, what's that, you. salmon? All black. Okay, I see you. Huh? No, you 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 ignore my question. That's salmon? <laughs> or is that pink? What's that? It's, I don't know what it is. That's nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's too... <laughs> Go ahead, man. <laughs> Go ahead. With... All right. We're going we're gonna to shout out our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Click the link in the description and use the promo code MARK and play our favorite game, the Pick'em game. We got some good, we got some good topics today. Again, Always. I hope you're ready. I'm, I stay ready. So I know last, last episode we talked a little bit about trash talkers. What was, I don't, I don't want to shine a light on all of the negative things. So I want to know who was a fan or, or, or somebody that was a, a good impact for you as far as like um, one, of your, one of your best supporters over the years. Give me a good story. Man, you know what? This is crazy. Like, my best supporter outside of my family was an old lady that lived on the corner house, Miss Mitchell. Miss Mitchell? Miss Mitchell. You don't know her was, first name? No. Miss Mitch, she was Miss Mitchell to the, to the whole block. Mm-hmm. And I was just Mark, her baby. And I'd go sit in a house, knock on the door after games, uh, or in between games the next, next day after practice, knock on the door and sit. She had to be 80 years old. Just sit on a couch and just talk. And, and the sad thing is she passed away. Her family never let people know and never got a chance to say goodbye or thank you or anything like that. But just an incredible woman that could care less whether I was rookie of the year, all-star, played for the Knicks. She just knew I was Mark from the block and would spend time. She wasn't a fan, but it was just a great story that, you know, you never know what she was pouring into me, depositing into me as a young man, as a dreamer, as a fan. The thing that stood out the most to me is when somebody just comes over and acknowledges how you conduct yourself, acknowledges how your kids conduct themselves, acknowledges, you know, buying you a, a cup of water, or, you know, paying for a dessert or whatever. Things like that you don't take for granted. And uh, it happens even to this day quite often. The so guy just recently just picked up a tab and refused to point out who he was, didn't want the waitress to let me know who she was, things like that. So you're not, I'm a, I'm a natural giver and keep on living long enough you realize that there's a bunch of natural takers out there so you you don't take for granted when people give to you i feel that you know about those takers right oh yeah the yeah, takers that's, that's, is that's some masterful take take the masterful they're <laughs> they amazing are, they are gifted we must know the same people <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are gifted i mean they are gifted i give them props they are gifted i think my favorite my favorite thing I ever got from, from a fan was we were at uh, University of Louisville, and one of the fans took the time out to hand draw all of, all of our players and uh, sent, sent it to each of us. And it was basically just a collage of all of us in our jerseys hanging out, and, and our facial expressions showed our personalities. It was, it was dope. Did so they get you was, right? Yeah, no, nah, they, they did me good. They did me good. I, I felt good about the picture. It's, I was, it's, I, it's, no, it's hilarious. I sit with you and I'm just a million stories go through my head. Go ahead and finish. Uh, I got a story. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. No, my brother Escalade, Troy, he, he was so excited to get his first tattoo. And he was, he was Escalade Jackson at the time. He's known. So he goes and gets a tattoo and he's going to get a tattoo of our dad <laughs> who had recently passed away. That's not the funny part. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> he, had, he had recently passed away. So Troy comes home, rips the Band-Aid off after getting a tattoo, and it looks like our neighbor, Mr. You. <laughs> he, looks, he looks nothing like my dad. I start dying laughing, but he's stuck. It's, it's there forever. <laughs> so it's just hilarious that the dude had a tattoo of the neighbor and not my dad. That's Not funny. our dad. But, it, but it, did it say at least Harry next to yeah, it? Yeah, okay. I mean, it said dad. Okay. But it wasn't dad. <laughs> it wasn't dad. It's like you having a tattoo of Reggie Miller talking about dad. Like, come on, man. What are we doing? That's funny, man. I don't got no good good tattoo stories, but that's funny. But it is it is great when people do something out of the kindness of their hearts. Yeah. And those takers, I, I talk about them, but I'm dead serious because you can put yourself in a position to give and give and give and give, but a taker really doesn't appreciate it. And you can give a hundred times 
and the hundred and first time say, no, I can't do it, that take will act like you never did a hundred things for them. Oh, one thousand percent. It's never enough. If somebody has that mentality, it's, it's, they're going to drain you. They're going to drain you. Been there. You been there? Been there. <laughs> I, feel, been there. I feel like we live in similar lives. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I ain't played 17 years in the NBA, <laughs> but I must be dealing with some similar people. <laughs> Let's keep it. Let's keep it with the with the fans since we're talking about it. We got some good questions from them today. That's why I said it was gonna be a good show. I'm excited. It's a it's a it's a home run. Easy for me. They 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 got all the questions right here. So let's start off with first questions. Before before we even go to the first questions, I gotta say, let me get my camera. <laughs> why are you laughing? Because you're just comfortable right now. Let me yeah. let me get my camera. But first day it was like, which camera is it? Now it's like, let me get my camera. No, this is my person. This I mean, camera been through ten episodes with me. Yeah, we got a we got, got a relationship. Y'all got Tell a relationship. Me, we, a lot of episodes. Like yeah, yeah. Who's counting? Anyways, could, can I have my moment, yes, please? Yes, I'll be quiet. You done mess, made me mess up what I was about to. Ah, yes. Anyways, thank you. Please give me my camera. <laughs> thank you. I just want to say thank you to all the fans for the comments that y'all are giving, the likes, the support, the genuine love. We see your comments, and we really appreciate just being able to interact with y'all. Um, I know it's a new platform for my father, but it's a new platform for me also, and just hearing y'all feedback helps us every day. So we giving back to y'all right now, and we're going to answer some of y'all questions. So back, back to the show. Anyways, now that I'm off of my camera, now that we go good. back to the- That was good. Sincere, and I, I'm in agreement. Thank you. Thank you. See? Just give me my space to be- Let me get my ISO off every once in a while. You know how I play. You be PG, just give me a give me See, an assist. See, that's that taker. That's the, I was talking about you as a basketball player. You don't you don't want to share the basketball. You're taking the double and triple team. You're jacking up shots. I'm open. At some point, let me let me let me get a shot up. I got a shot for All you right. right here. First question by Childer Yan Mack. It goes: What is happening to the traditional facilitate first point guard? Is it going out of style? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. Guys like me are gone. It's over. But there is a place for it. The time and place is when the game slows down, come playoff time, you will need somebody that has the ability to dictate pace and be the ultimate maestro in certain situations in ball games. Playoff games, when you want to make sure you get quality looks, you have to have that person. That doesn't, the, the good thing, it doesn't have to be the point guard today. It can be, you know, just a role player coming off the bench or a role player on the perimeter on your team. But that style play is dead. And I think what we see today is dynamic point guards, dynamic playmakers that can carry the load offensively. So I wouldn't want a guy like me because I don't have the ability to average 25, 30 a night. I have the ability to get guys open shots and facilitate. But in today's game, the way the rules are made, in order to win it all, you need a guy on the perimeter, whether it's your point guard, your shooting guard, your wing player, that can go and get 25, 30 on a given night and put pressure, constant pressure on the defense. So those days are gone. I got to respectfully disagree. I don't think that it's that those days are, are done. I think that guards have evolved. So where it was you facilitating and, and essentially just staying in that role, now we have people like SGA, we have people like Halliburton, we have players like uh, D'Lo, who can facilitate and score. So I don't think that is that that they're gone. I think that they've evolved over time. Evolved to a certain extent. They haven't evolved as far as their understanding of the game. I say that respectfully. They've evolved as far as skill set, athleticism, scoring ability. But as far as breaking down a game. I don't think they, they, they've evolved. I think they've taken a step back. And I say that, again, respectfully. Are they as good, if not better? 1,000%. There's certain things that old school players did that was better than what they're doing today. You look at Mike Conley. He can play another five years because of his understanding of the game and his understanding of when and where to choose and pick his spots to be aggressive offensively and when to give the basketball to Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, and that supporting cast of theirs. Let's go to the next one. We got No Limit C Note, and he asks, what unicorn player would you build a team around? He gives three options. Ralph Sampson, Kristaps Porzingis, or Chet Holger. You said No Limit. Is he part of the No Limit family? He might be. He Hold might up. Be, hey? this, this, you gotta, I, I don't, I don't want to give a shout out if it's not, but you know, that's family. Yeah, no question. Um, can I go off the board as far as my pick for the unicorn, or is, am I tied to these three? Because my if, I, if, you, if you had a choice... 
any unicorn ever, I'm going with Wimby. My man, what did No Limit C Note say? It says nothing about Wimby in his question. Can but, we stick with No Limit? This is for the fans. Yes, but the question has no limit. <laughs> don't, y'all don't I'm, do not I'm, laugh at that. Y'all, if y'all, if y'all, don't, yo, if y'all don't stop, I'm here all that week. might get I'm here edited all week. out. No, no, no. no. I, I like that. I like that. I like that. Okay. Okay. Um, Ralph Sampson's in the Hall of Fame. Ralph Sampson was the, was, the, was the first you can make the case playing alongside, playing at Virginia in college and then playing alongside the great Hakeem Olajuwon, the Twin Towers with the Houston Rockets. Ralph Sampson was incredible. Christoph Porzingis obviously started off with the New York Knicks, started off exciting, then had some injuries, and now, you know, obviously doing a great job with the Boston Celtics. If you had to twist my arm and say which one of these three I would take to start a team, I would say Chet, surprisingly, because today he's no match for Ralph Sampson and Christoph Zingas and what he's been able to accomplish. But Chet has real perimeter skills. I'm comfortable with him initiating offense. I'm comfortable with him bringing the ball to the floor, making plays, size, block shots, versatility. So my answer today would be Chet Hogan. I agree. I think I picked Chet. I know if we were playing, if we were playing 2K though, I got to take Ralph Sampson because for some reason they give him the three-point jump shot. We in a fake world now. Now we playing 2K. No, I'm 2K? just saying. I'm just saying. I, when I first saw the question, I was like, dang. If if he could actually shoot like he could shoot in the game, I'll pick Ralph Sampson. But now today's game, these dudes is a unicorn is what we're seeing in, in Wimby and Chet. Now, there are some people sitting at home watching right now saying, Mark, how could you sit there and not pick Ralph Sampson? Ralph Sampson is a Hall of Famer. He's absolutely incredible. He's an all-time great. What I am picking is a guy that can initiate offense in today's game. Could Ralph have done that if you put him into 2024? Yes, but he didn't do it. So that's why I'm not selecting him. But I got a question for you. You remember two years ago when I said there's a kid in high school that can start on the NBA team right now? And you said, who? And I showed you some clips of Chet, and you was like, nah, nah, nah. And then you was yeah. like, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm just making sure. What? That's all. You ju- What's up with you just bringing up my points? My no, because points you, just, to, just to bring them up. I tell you what, okay. I'm, you want me I'm, to explain I'm gonna give it? You cre- I'm going to give you credit. One day you came home after working out in the gym, and you said, Dad, I'm playing with this guy who's a good NBA player but he's going to be a superstar. I said, who? You said, Paul George. I said, superstar? You said, dad, he's off the charts. You were right. Thank you. So did I balance it out? Did I balance it out? And this was before before Paul George was Paul George. Thank you. You raved about him. Thank you. Give me that same energy when you're wrong on the the pick. No, I accept it. I did say that about Chet. But then once I watched him closer, I was like, no, this dude is, this dude is, I underrated him. To me, he's closer to, He's not Wimby, yeah, but he's watch closer. Him out. Watch your mouth. See, this is what I'm saying, no, I'm just man. watch your mouth. He's closer to Wimby than people give credit. That dude has game. I'm closer to Wimby than people give credit. If you want to be technical, yes. We got to go to the they, next they're gonna question. They're going to say man. we're nowhere in the realm, and they're right, but I'm closer than they think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We got to go to the next question. Thank you. That was a good question. We got a question from Trey Lopez, and he asked, do you think Tim Duncan is underrated as an all-time great? No. I think we rate him fairly, give him the props that he deserves. He's the greatest power forward that this league has ever seen. He's an all-time great player. He's a Hall of Famer, and uh, he's a special talent. So I think we rate him just fine. I don't think we disrespect him at all. I think we probably disrespect the rest of the I, I believe a guy like Charles Barkley is the second best power forward in the history of this game. Championship or not, his presence, I played against him, I competed against him, I watched him. But Tim Duncan, I believe we rate him and rank him just fine. He's an all-time great, and he, he, he will, you know, what he did in San Antonio all those years is recognized, appreciated, and acknowledged. I thought about something interesting today as I was driving to the studio. What if players like Tim Duncan played in today's game? Would they get a three-point jump shot? Would they be able to adapt? Or is that something that, you know, it's just how they are as players. They would adapt because you got to realize these players today, they're working on these shots. And I was listening to the radio the other day and a former teammate of mine, seven foot four inch Rick Smith, who was my center with the Indiana Pacers, who had a very good mid-range jump shot, was outstanding in pick and pop situations, great poster player. They asked him, could he be a three-point shooter? And I totally agree with them. 
1,000%. He shoots better than the centers in today's game. So with the, the amount of time that they put in practicing those shots, without a doubt, he'd be a three-point shooter. So I feel the same way about Tim Duncan. Later on in his career, he would take some threes. He won some games shooting threes. Yeah. So I, I absolutely believe so. But he was, I believe he got every bit of out of his tank that, that, that he, he had in it at the end of his career. And uh, what an incredible run and somebody that we'll be talking about years from now. Yeah, those are great days, man. We played against them in the uh, in the playoffs when I was coaching the Golden State Warriors, and we 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 split the first two games, and they wound up beating us in six games. But it was an incredible series, and we were new to the scene of playoff basketball, learned so much, gained so much understanding of what it takes to win come playoff time, and I think it propelled the Warriors to their great run. But uh, playing against great individual talent and great team talent forces you to get better. Thinking about those great Spurs teams, it leads me to a sixth man conversation with Manu Ginobili being one of the greatest six men of all time, arguably, if not the greatest six man of all time. What are some of the best six mans that, you, that you've seen? Who, who, who's it for you? Again, you're gonna be so disrespectful. I gotta give shout outs to the great Lou Williams and the great Jamal Crawford. I believe both guys, if, I, if I'm, hopefully I'm not wrong, but one of them won it three times. And maybe they both did, but the impact of scoring off the bench, Ginobili's great. But those guys are certainly in the discussion. You go back to my days and just before my days, the microwave, you don't, you're too young to remember Vinnie Johnson from the Detroit Pistons, a special guy that came off the bench, impacted the game and his scoring, had a role, and they won championships. You look at the Philadelphia 76ers, again, before my time, just towards the beginning of my time and end of his, Andrew Toney, guy that came off the bench, won a championship with the Philadelphia 76ers, scoring off the bench. So historically, there's been some great, great players impacting off the bench and, and being difference makers. But Mano Ginobili is certainly a guy, obviously in the Hall of Fame, that did it and then grew into a role of a star. Started off as a role player, impacted the game, and then became a star and a co-star of those great Spurs basketball teams. It's, it's a gift to be able I couldn't do it. To be called upon after the game starts, now, there is an advantage that you're sitting there watching, strategically planning, how can I impact this game? How are they defending the pick and roll? How are they defending different actions? But there's also a downside to it. I'm sitting over here getting stiff. I'm getting, my legs are getting stiff and I, my, the heat pack's not working and all of a sudden, yeah, go ahead, next question. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got, <laughs> let's this go to the is. next question, man. Great question. <laughs> Great question. All right. Okay, here's one that's going to put you on the spot. You ready? It's from Reform Towson, and they said, who was Mark's favorite teammate of all time? It, it, it would be unfair to play 17 years and to say one guy. I can give you a couple of guys uh, in no particular order. Patrick Ewing, Reggie Miller, Chris Mullen. Three guys, that's three Hall of Famers. It impacted me at three different locations that I played for, college, New York, and then in, in Indiana. But those three guys were superstars, and they were total team players and incredible professionals with their habits and the way they went about their business of preparing for basketball games. Just, just three of the best, and three guys that family to me, as you know, to the day I take my last breath. Now you played at St. John's with Chris Mullen, right? Yes, I did. You got a you got a story or, or some something from those days? Some great stories. Uh, Chris Mullen. Well, I played against. This is this is a great story. I was a sophomore in high school, not being recruited by anybody. Starting on a varsity team, we're playing against a division rival. I'm Bishop Lachlan High School, Severian High School, with their senior superstar named Chris Mullen who had decided to go to St. John's University. So it, in the game, when it starts, we realize the legendary Hall of Fame coach of St. John's is at the game to see his prize recruit. Lou Conaseca is at the game to see Chris Mullen. That's it. I play well. From that day, the next morning, I'm recruited by St. John's University. The message is you never know who's watching. I could have went and gone through the motions. I'm just a young kid, don't know any better, but I play it like it's, it means something to me. So because of my mentality, because of my approach, because of the way I got after it, I wound up getting a scholarship and going to St. John's University and being recruited. But when I got to St. John's, I couldn't shoot the basketball. 
I could do everything else on the court, but I couldn't shoot. Chris Mullen got to St. John's. One of the greatest gifts ever shooting the basketball was his. He couldn't drive, couldn't make plays, couldn't be creative. Unbeknownst to either one of us, Coach Connor Seca called us both in the office individually and challenged us to play one-on-one every day. He told Chris, and I wasn't aware of this, back up off of Jack's, make him shoot the basketball, kick his behind every day. Calls me in office. I want you to pressure Chris. I want you to pressure him, pressure him. Don't let him get the jump shot off. Make him drive by you. So we are sharpening iron, sharpening iron. I'm working on my greatest weakness. He's working on his greatest weakness. And we didn't know that we were set up to do it. But it made out out the biggest weaknesses Still weaknesses to a certain extent, but it minimized the damage that you can do playing us that way because of how much better we got night in and night out, day in and day out of practicing. And it, and it propelled us to both of us playing double-digit careers in the NBA. But that's genius coaching yeah. and great leadership. Did you ever pull on that in, 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 your, in your Warriors days? I stole from so many coaches. Yeah? Yeah, I, I played for, I don't know off the top of my head, seven, eight Hall of Fame coaches. Yeah. It'd be criminal if I didn't take anything from them. But it'd also be criminal if I didn't watch some of the things that they did that I didn't agree with and eliminate it. The same way with parenting. You're going to be a better parent than me because of some of the mistakes I made and some of the good things I made. And I think you do that as a coach. And, and, uh, and it propelled me into being the best coach that I could be by taking from and taking away from the greats that I played for. My high school coach, shout out Pat Quigley. He was, he was incredible. Social studies teacher but he was an incredible basketball mind. I know that's gotta mean a lot coming from you. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a big statement. I, I, I don't mess with my coaches. Yeah, yeah, he had to be a good coach. Yes. He helped you in social studies too? Funny story, <laughs> I didn't have him as a teacher. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell this story. Why not? We go, why not tell the story, man? He gave my sister a 64, man. <laughs> Dude, coach, come on, man, Are you kidding me? You kidding me? What did you want him to look out for? Look out for her too. One point. Oh, you wanted her to just get a sixty-five. Give, give her a sixty-five, coach. I, I've done something that earns that. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? What you thought your, your in and out was that nice? You was Man, gonna get her a point. We won a state championship. My sister deserves oh, a sixty-five. True. No, you won the state championship. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get a call from my sister now. Why you ain't helping study? That's not what I do. You what, gotta know your strengths and weaknesses. What you mean? You're a college graduate? That's I am a college graduate, but I take care of my own. Oh, you don't help your sister? I was, <laughs> I, was, I was busy playing ball and working and getting ready you know, for the future. Yeah, I, I see. I know. I love you, Auntie. I'm not gonna say your name because I'm not gonna put it out there, but I love you. I know okay. who you are. Okay. You smart to me. 64, though. Are, you, are we in agreement he could have given it a, a huh? one point? Are we in agreement that he could have? Yeah, yeah, he could have given her one point. It's not illegal about that. The reason why I had to back off it because I was about to be totally against it. But it's been a circumstance where I had a grade that wasn't that good, but because I was playing well, I, I got boosted up. Wow. What? I, I, I earned everything what I got. <laughs> I earned mine. That degree, that degree, that's mine. I earned it. No, no, I no earned you it. didn't. You just admitted that you did. What you mean I earned no, it? I'm, I earned it on the court. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I earned it by, by taking wow. the hearts of the fans. Wow. They was cheering for me I, in the I didn't classroom. Know that. I didn't know that. I was that. struggling for a minute. They was like, yo, you, you played great last night. Why is it so hard for you to learn this? Come here. Let me talk to you. Wow. I'm like, yo, I got practice. I got this going on, you know. And the teacher looked out. It was nice. We are St. John's. I earned it. I what? Earned you? It. No, no, I earned it. I don't know. I, I earned it. <laughs> All right, man. Next question. This is crazy. You throwing me under the bus today. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that question. We got another one. We got some good ones today, man. Y'all coming through with these questions. We got Jay Nice from Queens, and he wants to know, what was the first big purchase you made with your first significant NBA check? First big purchase I made, I was going into the draft, promised to go at a certain pick, but wasn't really sure. So my first big purchase, I went to the dealership and bought a BMW 325i, loaded it up. I bought it that day, was about to go pick it up, and something said, don't hedge your bet. Obviously, they got 325i's, they got fives, they got sevens. I went back the next day and was like, give me the sign. <laughs> 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 I'm going to do this. I want to put pressure on myself. Like, I knew I had. I, yeah, if yeah. you get the three, I can last a year and then fade yeah. to black. If I got the seven, there's pressure on me to, you know, I got to make sure this thing works out. Yeah. So I got the seven, black, 735, gold BBS rims. Incredible time. So that was the first thing I ever bought. And did obviously. You, did you ride it, ride it back through the neighborhood once you got it? I lived in the neighborhood. That's I, what I'm saying. Yeah, How did it feel going through, going through the neighborhood and everybody seeing, yo, Jack, Jack got that paper now? 
No, nah, we didn't. They we wasn't didn't, thinking we didn't, that. They, they were thinking it. They never <laughs> said it. But the, the thing that that was great about it is, I w- I didn't live in the hood, but it wasn't obviously you can get robbed or whatever. But nobody messed with my car because it, it was a it was a symbol of pride in the neighborhood that it was mine and that we made it, yeah. which was awesome, which was absolutely incredible. So I, great times. But my best purchase was buying my mom and dad a house, without a doubt. Being able to buy them a house and move them to a better area was a dream come true. What was that day like, giving them the keys and letting them know this is y'all's? That's another funny story. Gave them the key, bought my dad a car. I was so excited. Oh, this is, I was so excited buying my, my dad a Lincoln Continental, uh, tan with tan interior. This is crazy. I don't know if I've ever told you this. I'm driving, and I'm so excited. I have an accident. <laughs> <laughs> I hit somebody on the red light. <laughs> I was at grooving. the red light. Yeah, at the red light. I was grooving like I was. I was. I was on ten. He was listening to music. He was blasting the. I was radio. just in a zone. Like, <laughs> I mean, if you if you ever was able to do something for somebody that you wanted to do yeah. your entire life, yeah. you can understand. Fortunately, it wasn't a major accident. It was a little bumper. It worked out. No, no insurance, nothing, anything. But those two purchases meant the world to me, and it, it was incredible to be able to do it. That's dope. I never made the league, but I made a nice purchase lately. Did you? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I just found out about the. Do you know they got fabric shavers? Like where if like your 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 pants get like you know when you get the little little pause balls on them, you could you could take it. It's right on online. You could get it. It's why are you making that face? You are high maintenance. Why, man. You, what? <laughs> no, you're high Nobody maintenance. Nobody else has ever heard of them. A- I talked about buying my mom and dad a car and a house. You talking about? Lint roller. I'm sorry, I never got to buy my mom and dad a house yet. Let me let me get to that level. I got a, I got what I got. Let me ask you a question. How much was the lint roller? Ah, I gotta say like twenty. Okay. Like twenty. I, you know, it was I, a great purchase I, though, because I, I, I had a lot of pants that I was like, yo, these pants, I'm not gonna be able to wear them no more. But as soon as I put that little battery in, it's over. Brand new pants. I got I'm gonna let you borrow it. No, no, no. Come on, no. man. You, you, you just met me. What you mean? It's we, a good purchase. Have you ever come into the house? Uh, to my, my bedroom and see me wiping the lint off of my pants on my suit? No, but we different. I'm, I, I like lint rollers and I like, I like staying clean. Not to what say was that you not- <laughs> What was that? You serious? <laughs> nah, you took a lot of jazz with me today, so I got to come back. Nah, you clean, you clean. I'm thank playing you, with you. I'm playing you. with you. All right, man. Any, any, anything else you want to add on to the, to the story about the no, no, the no. house? No, that was, that was uh, fun times. And to this day, my family's still living there and got some great memories and great moments. All right, we got flashback time. You ready? I'm ready. Some good ones today. Always. All right, let's put it up. We got pictures. This you and Pop Pop right here. Boy, he a cool dude, ain't he? What you? Yeah, he look fly. I can't lie. <laughs> yeah. Straight, right. out of, straight out of the 70s, what? man. <laughs> <laughs> what you remember about this picture? Where is this? It's. It looks like it's in my house where I grew up in, in Queens. Just a dad hugging his son, proud of his son. You like my chain, you can't really see it, but it says Mark going going down. Oh, I was, that's I mean, that's nice. Little, that's little nice. Rope, so that's uh, I, I never mind. Wh- huh? What? I mean, nothing. It's, that's it's, nice. It's not a lint roller, but it's no, a no, chain. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it's through there. But, no, it's nice. You know, you look at these pictures and you go back and you uh, you cherish the moments. The example of a man, a father, a husband, a friend, a leader. Just, just precious times and valuable times. And that's what I think about what he would think today if, if he met all of his grandkids or his great grandkids. Just the impact, is forever, I'm forever grateful. I can remember playing in the park in my neighborhood, four o'clock after school, five, five fifteen, because we played in a cage. The full court was a cage. And at the end of the cage was a fence. And the bus stop was here. So I knew at 5.30 my dad was getting off work and was getting off the bus at about 5.30. So I'd be in the court playing, waiting for my dad to get off the bus and just watch for, you know, 30 minutes, just powerful, that I was successful, but that's what I lived for. That's the impact you're supposed to have on people. Yeah, those type of moments outshine even career or accolades that we get, moments with our parents. That's why fatherhood is so key. It's, it's, nobody can impact you like your father, where you, where you came from. And there's so many people that don't have a father and experience a lack of identity because of that. 
but the, but the good thing is that we all have a father in heaven who created us. And so it's just, a, it's just amazing to hear stories about Pop-Up and how he impacted you and how he molded you into the man that you've become. And in turn, you've molded you and your children to, uh, me, and, me and your children to who we've become. No question. And I love Muhammad Ali. I love the Earl of Pearl Monroe. Nobody like him. Nobody. I got a picture. Let's lighten it up a little bit. I got a picture for you to look at. Yeah. Right. Talking about younger years. What do you think of this one? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I look just like Noah here. What is this in my hand? Uh, do I have a shaver in my hand? What is this? I had a phone. I had a flip phone. This looks like a flip phone. I was fly. Hold think up. about it. You're five years old with a flip phone. Fly. You, you're here raving about a lint brush. Huh? What you mean? Like you got you a, had a you had I a flip phone at five. I appreciate the little things. That's why God blesses me with the big things. All right, okay, I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm grateful. All okay. right, you see the way I'm holding this flip phone. You were clean too. I, I'm not gonna lie. My favorite times of when you played were probably with the Pacers, as just as a child experience, because the way that they would allow me to just run around Conseco Fieldhouse was literally like a playhouse. Like you owned the joint. I was everywhere. Yeah. I was in the practice facility, in the in the gym. I was on the court. Tip off, I might be running up and down the sideline. <laughs> but it was beautiful. I think I saw you on the layup line one day. <laughs> <laughs> I was everywhere. <laughs> but nah, this is a great picture, man. This is a great picture. Legendary times. They love you in Indiana too, man. Yeah, they they're great people and great fans and great organization. And and shout out to the to the organizations that allow players, whether it be basketball, baseball, football, whatever sports, to have their kids around. Yeah. That's how that's that's get a taste and a sense of of the pros or the type of life we live. We're so far away from the kids, our kids in practice and traveling all around. That's how you get a Ken Griffey Jr. That's mm. how you get a Barry Bonds. Mm. You give them the opportunity to to sense it, to be around it, and to dream of it. Powerful moments. Uh, shout out to the organizations that that allow that to take place. I remember bringing you to practice one day, and one of my coaches was like. We don't do that. I'm like, what do you mean we don't do this? <laughs> we don't do I'm not, that. I'm not going to name him. I'm not going to name him. You sure? Yeah, I'm going to let him live. I mean, we no, I'm going to let him live. I'm going to let we, him live. See, I'm trying for y'all. I'm trying for y'all. I'm trying to get <laughs> No, You sure? But, but outstanding pitching and great memories. No, nah, this is a great moment. Let's thank our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Click the link in the description below and use the promo code MARK. That's M-A-R-K. Play the pick'em game. That's our favorite. That's a wrap for this episode of the Mark Jackson Show. Special shout outs to my guys, Cam and Mace, also under Delg Fantasy, also the Come and Talk to Me Network. Remember, before we go, I was a coach of the Golden State Warriors. We were playing the Los Angeles Lakers, right in front of my bench, right in front of our bench, the late great Kobe Bryant tore his Achilles. He tore his Achilles, they call a timeout, he hobbles over to the bench, he just got fouled. After the timeout, walks on a torn Achilles, from the bench to the foul line, knocks down two free throws, and then exits the ball game. What are you talking about? I know you're hobbled. I know you're hampered. I know you're hurt. I know you have a legitimate injury, and you're concerned right now. Whoever I'm talking to, I dare you to get up and finish it. Blessings. <laughs>